Now today, I'm gonna show you how to make a shrink inside of DaVinci Resolve. Now having movement is okay, but what we don't want is rotation. Alrighty, here we are in DaVinci Resolve, and let's get into it. The only other thing that we need is the Sharingan itself. So you can either make one or download one off of Google's and just, you know, I got it in my media pool. I'm gonna drop it into the timeline so you can double check. That's a Sharingan. I apologize. I just get so excited about this. Let's get it. We're gonna highlight both clips and then we're gonna right click new fusion clip go on into fusion now the way that davinci resolve automatically sets up a fusion clip is poopy i don't like it because if you look at this media in one you would assume that because it's on top it would be the sharingan but it's not if i turn it off everything gets turned off but if we select the media in two and we turn that off that's actually the so what i like to do is rearrange things like so also if your nodes aren't snapping in the place what you can do is right click uh arrange tools to grid bam everything's gonna be nice and organized now and we're just gonna rename this by hitting f2 and type in eyeballs so the very first thing we got to do is track in the sharingan to my eyeballs what we're gonna do is actually disconnect the eyeballs node from the merge so we can see what we're gonna do and we got to keep this merge because we're gonna use that later now if you have it selected what you can do is hit shift space to bring up the select tool page and you're gonna type in tracker the plain old tracker tra that will do just fine what i'm gonna do is take the playhead and move it all the way to the end of my clips that's just where i like to start the track and oh look at this this is our tracking point thingy my bob and it's kind of confusing at first if you're unfamiliar with it this dotted outside box that is the search area where davinci resolve is going to look for whatever we're tracking and that means this regular old box that is what we're tracking and in order to move this you hover over it and you find this other box and you click on it and you move it around to get a good track we want a high contrast area so you might think oh well i'll put it on my pupil but because your eyeballs can move erratically the tracking can get kind of messed up depending on your footage so what i would suggest is start somewhere simple like the inside of your eye now you can also refine that uh tracking area by clicking the outside of that box and just move it in because if we have it out here like this and our eyeballs are moving around that can mess things up also you know having the perspective too wide that can mess things up so we're gonna refine it okay now that that is done we're gonna head over to the inspector we're gonna change adaptive mode from none to best match and we're gonna turn down our match tolerance to about 0 0.05 and all we gotta do now is just track backwards Okay, okay. Let's uh just double check our footage by scrolling through with our playhead, making sure this sticks nicely. Very good. Very, very, very good. Now let's say for whatever reason, this tracking point right here wasn't good. Well, if we go down to the bottom of our inspector, track center, this is all of the keyframes. We can delete them by unchecking the keyframe. There you go. I just burped and it tasted like puke and black pepper. Now, because we only have one tracking point, that does not account for size. We're gonna add in another tracking point by clicking add. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna find another high contrast area. So I like to put it on the outside part of my eyeball. And uh, once again, we're going to refine that search area, or not search area, that tracking area. Now having all these boxes can be annoying, so we can just uncheck tracker one. There we go. And once again, we're starting at the end of our footage, so we're gonna track backwards. Again, double check, make sure all of your tracking points are good and you don't have anything crazy. Okay, we're gonna add one more tracking point, and this time what we're gonna do is put it on the pupil and track backwards. Now it is important that you recheck your trackers because if you don't, then those trackers aren't being applied. So check them again. Now, theoretically, what we could do is connect our eyeballs 
to the foreground element, the green arrow, and it would be tracked in. But I don't like this because it's not that good, okay? So instead, I'm gonna hold left shift, left click, drag my tracker up, and then put it over the merge. Now, what I'm gonna do is take a background node, connect that to the gold arrow of the tracker, and I'm gonna bring the alpha slider all the way down, making it transparent. Parent. And now we can connect the uh, eyeballs to the green and then the output of the tracker to the green of the merge. And so now we have this perfect, except not really perfect because this is obviously too big. So what we have to do is put a little space here and then, oh, look at that, a transform form node we're gonna click drag that in and now what we can do is resize this and also reposition it now there, there's a bit of a problem here because we can't see the eyeball what we can do is go into our merge and bring down our blend so we can really get a good look at what we're doing and surprisingly that that was almost on point i think maybe i would have to drag it down a little bit maybe to the right okay let's just scroll through here make sure this is all tracked in nicely it's looking pretty good it starts to get kind of messed up though right around here so what i'm going to do is add a center keyframe in my transform node and then i'm going to scroll to where it gets messed up and i'm just going to reposition this also looks like maybe the size needs to increase. So I'm gonna go back uh, to that first keyframe for the center at a size and then go to the other keyframe. And then I'm gonna bring that, that size up. And I'm just gonna go through the entire footage, double checking, making sure everything is nice and tracked in and you really shouldn't have to do too much. This is just refining it. Okay, 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 okay. Now, listen, this does not look good for two reasons. One, obviously, we have the Sharingan on my eyelid. We don't want that. Number two, uh, it's covering up the, the light in my eyes. And number three, you don't really get any texture, right? Because you can kind of see a little bit of texture in my eyeballs. I mean, if you're, you're closer up in the eyes, obviously more texture in the eyes. And either way, what we're going to do is bring the blend back up. To 100% and we're gonna change the apply mode everyone is going to be different based off your eye color but just experiment with these blend modes um i know from doing this already that overlay is probably the best for me what you want is a little bit of this key light coming through but also you still want to be able to see some of the detail in your uh your your uh your png that the, the sharinga See, like, this isn't right, okay? If we were to zoom out here, it, it would look like we put a sticker on my eye. This looks like a Snapchat filter. So I'm going to change this back to overlay. Oh, God, I'm going to throw up. Never mind. All good. Well, let's fix this part right here. We don't want the shoving gun on the eyelid. Now, we already have all of this tracking data. So what we can do is copy it, paste it below our merge, connect it to that blue arrow because the blue is for masking and we're going to drop in a b spline tool and connect that to the foreground element of your tracker because the iris part is pretty good we just want the eyelid to be masked out so i'm going to go really wide here like so going to make the eyelid all nice okay better but what we're going to do is drop in another B spline, connect that to the back of our other B spline, and we're gonna kind of follow the shape of the eyelid. Actually, what I'm gonna do is bring this way up here. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is go back into the first B spline, and we're gonna change paint mode from merge to ignore. I forgot to mention, but you also need to invert the second B spline node. Now, what we're going to do is bring up this soft edge in our second B spline. Oh God, just a touch. We don't want it to be on the eyelid, but a little bit of a blend to it. So that way we get kind of a, a shadow. If your eye, if you have a close up of your eye, this will also kind of blend in the eyelashes. I want you to pay close attention, okay? On the left eye, here's the key light. It's just pure white. But on the right eye, we have a bit of red in here. We don't want that. So we're gonna copy our media in one. That's our original image. Paste it 
after. Now what we're gonna do is hit shift space and then type in Luma Keyer. Bring it into your second viewer window by hitting one on your keyboard. What we want is to remove all of the dark areas. Now, depending on your footage, the default settings might work. As you can see, it cleaned it up pretty nicely, but we can just adjust it. Now the settings are pretty self-explanatory. The low setting adjusts the darkness, okay? And the high setting adjusts the brightness, okay? So we want to bring up that brightness just a little bit. There we go. Now, a bit of an issue. We can't really see the detail and the Sharingan anymore. So after our transform node, what we can do is add a uh, color corrector node. Bring up that saturation. We can also, you know, bring up the gain, maybe bring down that lift. It all, it all depends on your video. Use this to color correct your thingamabob. Now, how do we get the rotation of the Sharingan? Well, that is pretty easy to do, my friend. It all depends on your video, but you just start somewhere. You go into your transform, you add an angle keyframe. You go somewhere else in your video and you bring up or down, whatever, the the angle and now in our spline we're gonna find that transform boom and we're gonna uncheck center and size because we don't need to see that we're gonna hit zoom to fit and now we're gonna highlight this last keyframe drag that out and you know just kind of mess with the graph i find something like this to look best but you know make your video yours now one thing that i forgot to add is what happens if you blink. Well, because of the Luma gear, that's gonna take care of most things. I mean, like, look at this. That, that would be acceptable, but we can make it look even better. And there's a few things that you can do. Again, it depends on your video. One thing you could do is you go into that second B spline. You add a keyframe before you start to blink. You move over and you bring down that lower part so it fits better with your eyelid and i mean that that's pretty good the other thing you could do is you add some blend keyframes so we're gonna add a blend keyframe right here we're gonna figure out where we want this to be in like fully right here now we're gonna go back to the beginning and bring our blend all the way down to zero so now you can see it it comes in real nice okay so the very last thing we have to do is add some motion blur to the sharingan so highlight your node tree like so bring it up two notches underneath your tracker oh sh stop it underneath your tracker shift space bring up the select tool page type in optical flow do it once again type in vector motion blur and there you go so just as a recap this is our node tree setup well technically this is part of it too so we have the png of the sharingan then we have a transform node to adjust the positioning and the size we have a color corrector node to color correct then we have the tracker so it sticks to our eyes we have optical flow and vector motion blur to add motion blur and then we have our merge to tie it into the main pipeline now we have to mask it so we have our tracker to track in the mask and our 2b splines as our mask the last thing that we have is the luma gear with our media in copy and that is to uh fix the key light here to make it you know, you know natural looking and that's how you make a sharing gun inside of davinci resolve make sure you like if the video helped comment what you want to see next and subscribe so you can see all the tutorials goodbye have a nice day